We've completed our main objective with Arsenal. It was to win the Premier League in the first season and we have done that with flying colours. This would be the cherry on top though. Arsenal versus Dortmund in the final of the Europa League. Let's get into it. Obviously, absolutely nothing happening since the last time we met, which was the final day of the Premier League season. And we'll just take another quick look to remind ourselves of exactly what happened. We finished top of the table. Nine points clear from both Liverpool and Manchester City. Aubameyang definitely being the leading light in terms of the league campaign. But that takes us to the Europa League today against Dortmund in the Europa League final. And this is how we're going to line up. Leno and Gold, Bellerin, Ruben Diaz comes in, although he's still lacking a bit of fitness. I'm going to play him because he is our best centre-back and if he gets injured, I'm not going to be here afterwards, so I don't really care. David Luiz and Kieran Tini complete the defence. Lucas Torreira has been having a fine time of it in defensive midfield as the deep-lying playmaker, so he retains his spot there. Matteo Guendouzi is preferred to Thomas Partey as he has been in better form in the previous five games. Nicolas Pepe, Meza Ozil and Everton play in behind the star striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. So Dortmund, Dortmund, Dortmund. The player Paco Alcacer up top. It's it's a pretty much standard uh, Dortmund side. Hakimi on the right back spot on loan from Real Madrid. Uh, Mats Hummels, Akanji, uh, Guerrero, Thomas Delaney, Axel Witzel, Mario Goetze, Jadon Sancho, Marco Royce, and of course Alcacer up top with Berkey and Goal. Fantastic squad. Clearly a fantastic squad. But I think we match them at the very least in terms of player quality. Maybe even a bit better in some places, like Aubameyang, better than Alcacer. Marco Royce versus Everton. What's Marco? Marco Royce probably takes the takes the win there. Uh, Özil, I think, definitely takes Mario Goethe. Maybe they're a pretty similar sort of player, but I would take Özil in his current form over Goethe. Sancho versus Pepe. Sancho is probably better than him. Let's be honest. Thomas Delaney versus Guendouzi. Who wins there? Guendouzi's obviously got a lot of potential, but Thomas Delaney is a lot better. That's that's not no argument. Axel Witzel versus Luke. Actually, do Dortmund have a better squad than us? <laughs> they might do. But anyway, I think we have what it takes to win this Europa League final. We're coming off a high, winning the Premier League. Let's see how we get on. So we will be relying and hoping that Aubameyang can seal the victory for us today. But the first highlight of the game goes Dortmund's way. Hakimi receives the ball. On the right-hand side, plays it inside to Jadon Sancho. They're playing it about well, keeping possession. Now they're going to whip it in the R, and <laughs> Marco Royce is there straight away to put Borussia Dortmund 1-0 up two minutes in. His 20th goal of the season for Dortmund and an assist for Jadon Sancho. Not the idealist of starts, but, um, you know, let's not... We don't need to completely freak out right now. It's only two minutes in, and we've got plenty of time to turn this around. So the first 20 minutes or so haven't been particularly kind to how we're playing. So we are going to lower the tempo, short, um, short now we're passing and see if we can retain possession a little bit better as there is a highlight. Hector Bellerin plays back to Guendouzi to Ozil on the edge of the box. We go all the way back to Torreira. Tini on the left-hand side. What's he going to do? He goes for goal and Aubameyang is there for the follow-up. His 33rd goal of the season. He was out for three months. His 33rd goal of the season to level things up 22 minutes in. We needed that. Um, if they had went 2-0 up, we would have been had to, we would have had to push for things. And then the counter-attack on Dortmund side could have definitely punished us. But getting back to 1-1 20 minutes in is ideal. And ever since we've changed to the lower tempo and the shorter passing, we've regained some of that possession. We're definitely having more shots and stuff going by the match stats. So it looks like it was a, an accurate change and something that's countering Dortmund a little bit better than what we started with. Having said that, two minutes before half-time, Paco Alcacer, Leno saves. The highlight continues after that Alcacer chance. And Everton brings it down the left-hand side. Cuts in, goes for goal. And that is pretty special to do in a final. Everton with his 12th goal of the season. David Luiz with the assist. And this is a solo goal pretty much. Picks it up on the halfway line and drives forward inside. Beating a couple of men here to get past them. And then goes for goal. And that is something special. And that's exactly what we're going to need to win today. Arsenal 2, Dortmund 1. And there we have it. Arsenal 2, Borussia Dortmund 1. A nightmare start. A perfect finish to the first half. Let's see if we can keep it going for the second. We are going to drop from an attacking team mentality. To something a bit more positive. Again, trying to regain and tally up some of that possession. We are going to drop the tempo even lower. Um, in an attempt to try and uh, retain the possession. Tini has picked up a knock. No point in risking him. We've got Kalasnac. It was pretty much a side grid. We're not downgrading now first 11 by doing that. So the time is ticking away in this second half. Only 15 minutes to go. 
We can make changes if needed, but I'm quite hesitant. I'm ready. Uh, I'm pleased with how the boys are playing at the very least. But with nine minutes to go, Marco Royce drives into the box. Leno with the easy save. And that was a highlight. I was expecting that to continue. With only a few minutes remain, we will look to waste some time with some substitutes. Malqui can come on for Hector Bellerin at right back. And Nicholas Pepe can come off for Reese Nelson on the right wing. And there we have it, boys. That's full time. The second half was completely dead. We killed that game well and truly. Arsenal 2, Dortmund 1. League Cup winners, Premier League winners, Europa League winners. We have had a super, super successful campaign with Arsenal. Doing the treble. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. Only Liverpool knocking us out of the FA Cup ruined our competition ratings. Um, not us out in the quarter final. That would have been nice to win as well. But we have done it. Arsenal's first season has been resurrected and saved. They have well and truly performed above expectations. If we go to the club vision, um, they were expected to reach the final of the Europa League, in fairness, but we won, so we went a step ahead of what the board wanted. In terms of the Premier League, they expected us to qualify for the Champions League, and we won the Premier League, so a step above of what they wanted. We failed in the FA Cup, compared to what they were expecting. The semi-final, but they did understand we had a difficult draw, which we did. Uh, they didn't care about the League Cup, which is just baffling to me. But we won that as well. So we've done absolutely fantastic stuff with Arsenal. So just reviewing the season and thinking about what we did and what might have been the catalyst for the change. Because even with the AI managers, I rarely see um, Arsenal competing right at the very top of the Premier League. I think selling Grand Saka... Whilst um, he's classed as a world-class midfielder, I certainly don't see that in him. And playing Lucas Torreira in his position, I think, definitely helped improve Lucas Torreira. Maybe we would have been okay without selling Xhaka and starting him instead. But his physicals leave a lot to be desired. His mentals, whilst good in some areas, aren't world-class. His technicals are brilliant for a deep-line playmaker, though. Um, getting that £35 million in early... Um, enabling us to strengthen the squad, I think, was exactly what was required, um, which allowed us to bring in, it was Malqui and Thomas Party for a combined total of nearly £25 million, which I think is not too bad. Thomas Party came in, had a very, very good season playing as our third choice central midfielder. He played a lot of football as Gwen Doozy was improving, and I think he was definitely a shrewd acquisition at 26 years old. And Malqui, I think our start of our campaign wouldn't have been half as well if it wasn't for him. We would have been playing Callum Chambers at right back until Hector Bellerin came and um, got back to full fitness. Uh, attacking wise, he's just a step above Callum Chambers. And defensively, he's fine as well. He's done absolutely brilliant for us. So £9 million, pounds, he's definitely a good bit of business as well. And then fast forwarding into the January, I think what actually helped us confirm our position as title winners was Aubameyang's injury. It made us abandon the two striker formation, play one up top, get the left winger involved, which was Everton, which we signed in the January transfer window. And he came in, got five goals in the Premier League, two assists, a 7.42 average rating in 13 games. And even more if you combine with the Europa League and stuff, he done fantastically well for us. And he was a shrewd signing at £22 million. I mean, Gury, maybe a little bit of a waste of money, but we did have an injury crisis at the time when we signed him. He's still going to be absolutely fantastic if you sign him in the first season for Arsenal and then continue to develop him. But obviously with us only doing one season, it's maybe somewhere I could have looked at and not maybe spent as much money as I did, which was £15.5 million. And the final sale was Shrod uh, Mustafi. We sold him to Watford for £17 million, basically to fund the move for Ruben Diaz, who was absolutely massive. Um, he's by far the best central defender at the club. A 7.34 average rating in 10 Premier League games. Uh, five Europa League games with a 7.32. He played brilliantly for us. And um, I think going forward with Arsenal, if you are to sign someone like this, you've got your centre-back sorted for another eight years. Easy eight years. His physicals, his mentals, technicals. He's already the complete player with a little bit of more room to grow, according to my assistant manager. And he's a world-class centre-back. No doubt about it. In terms of the squad, I was very surprised at how influential Mesut Ozil was, particularly early on in the season. He did only get four goals and seven assists, but I don't know about you, I don't really have much um, luck with the attack and midfield role in general in terms of output. Um, I just don't seem to be able to get them to get in the goals, getting in the assists as much as I can with a striker or a winger or even a fullback. Um, but he did perform particularly well. He was getting high average ratings. A 7.29 average over the Premier League campaign is nothing to sneeze at. And I was very surprised. I was prepared to sell him. 
in all honesty, in the first season. But it would have been very difficult to get anyone up here for him with his high wages as well. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, there's nothing more that needs to be said about this boy. He's absolutely phenomenal. Play him up front. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to waste him on the wing. Um, I would want him to play in his natural position to get the best out of him. He's the best player at the club. And 24 goals and 25 games proves it in the Premier League. And his injury, whilst unfortunate, did force us into the change of formation and probably ended up winning us the title. Nicolas Pepe, I didn't expect as much as we got out of him. 16 goals and 14 assists in 34 games in the Prem. He is absolutely fantastic. I was concerned about his crossing ability, whether he's going to actually get involved in the um, assist market. But he did, and he done particularly well. And at 24 years old, he's still a very good player. Um, Everton we've already spoke about Gwen Doozy improved over the season ended up starting 26 times in the Premier League you've got to give this boy game time he's going to be a world class central midfielder and whilst he might not be in the first season he's going to be phenomenal so play him um, Lucas Torreira the same he was absolutely phenomenal for us in the defensive midfield role he's got the, the acceleration the agility and the physicals more well rounded than Granit Xhaka I would say to be either a box-to-box -box midfielder in the centre or a deep-lying playmaker in the defensive uh, midfield. He's, and he's grown all the time. He's still only 24 years old. You're going to get, a, well, my assistant reckons a world-class player. And if you do ever come to sell him, you're going to get a lot of money for him. That's one of the key takeaways from that. Kieran Tini uh, returned from injury and made that left-back uh, spot his own left wing-back whilst we, were, we weren't playing um, a left winger. And he got involved quite a lot. Four goals and six assists in 24 Premier League games. And Hector Bellerin, assist king. Um, 11 assists in 26 Premier League games at right back. He never played right wing back, very, very rarely. So he was always in the right uh, right back spot. And he, him and Nicolas Pepe really did develop a good partnership with Pepe cutting inside as the inverted winger and Hector Bellerin exploiting that space on the right-hand side. And he was fantastic. Um, better than Malqui, better than Chambers. And I think it's purely down to his physical attributes. You know, if you look, if you compare him with Malqui, I think Malqui probably has some better stats in the technical areas. Look, he's got a little bit better vision. Um, he's got better aerial ability, similar mental, similar defendants, better physical. But that speed and the attacking ability of Hector Bellerin is what made the difference for us. In the defence, Socrates and David Luiz are definitely still capable of being a top Premier League centre-back. Socrates is a little bit more limited in terms of being a ball player in centre half, but he will do the job at the back alongside David Luiz, who is a little bit better well rounded in terms of being able to play out the ball from the back. And that's why when Ruben Diaz came in, we were playing the ball out from the back, and David Luiz and Ruben Diaz made their partnership the one that we ended up following with. Bernd Leno, he's just a standard goalkeeper, he's nothing special, but he's going to be enough, at least in the first season, to be able to compete at the top of the Premier League. Um, Lacazette, I was disappointed with Lacazette, in all honesty. We did have him in an unorthodox position for a lot of the season. He didn't really score that many goals. When he ended up going up top by himself, he definitely played a lot better and got himself on the goal sheet a lot more. But 13 goals in 29 Premier League games, you expect more from an elite striker like that. And it would be someone I would, con if I was to continue this save, I would consider moving him on for good money and reinvesting that uh, elsewhere in the squad. Kolasinac done fantastically well when called upon. He is more than capable of being a backup to Kieran Tini or a starter, should you require someone a little bit more defensive. Um, but I would always recommend getting Tini involved and getting him developing. Reese Nelson, he's been a surprise package for me. He only started four Premier League games, but 22 off the bench. Three goals, four sits, a decent average rating. He done very, very well in the FA Cup. Three appearances, two goals and five assists. Europa League, he done okay in. Um, but yeah, if Nicolas Pepe ever dropped out of form, I knew he was capable of coming in. And even in a role he wasn't necessarily comfortable with, I was going to get performances out of him. And the same can be said for Emile Smith-Rowe, who had a lot more limited game time as we weren't playing a left winger for a large part of the season. Um, but again, he's more than capable as well. And potential to grow is nice. I think that's pretty much everybody I want to talk about. So that is going to be it for the series. We have completed our objectives. Europa League winners, Premier League winners, League Cup winners. Arsenal are a very capable side on Football Manager. They are f far better on Football Manager than they are in real life. Let's see how the rest of the real life season goes, whether they can turn things around under Miguel Arteta, or whether they need a summer transfer window where they invest heavily. 
But anyway, if you have enjoyed this series, please consider leaving a like and getting yourself subscribed. We have a new series coming, which is a long, long-term series, which will be revealed tomorrow when this uh, episode has gone out. But until then, take it easy.